Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, today we are going to learn about the lacrimal gland and lacrimal pathway. A lacrimal gland is an exocrine gland that is present below the upper eyelid and that is responsible for the secretion of lacrimal fluid or tears. This is the first slide. In this slide we can see that uh, this whole pathway represents the pathway of uh, lacrimal gland or lacrimal secretion or to know about the lacrimal gland and lacrimal secretion we are going to uh, learn a few terminologies the lateral side of the eye this is the lateral side of the eye this lateral side of the eye is called this edge is called lateral commissure this is called lateral commissure while this median uh, side this median side of the eye where the two pulphebra are two eyelid meet that point is called median commissure i'm going to write it one is a lateral commissure just like the commissure of lips and the other is median commissure now the gap in between the gap in between the upper and lower eyelid the whole gap this gap this gap is called this is called palpebral fissure this is called palpebral fissure palpebral fissure so the lateral side of the eye where the upper and lower eyelid meet that edge or that point is called lateral commissure and the median point where the upper eyelid and lower eyelid meet that is called median commissure now the gap in between the upper and lower eyelid is called palpebral fissure just like the fissure of the uh, brain just like the fissure of the lips just like the fissure uh, throughout the body uh, now coming towards the uh, lacrimal gland this represent the lacrimal gland lacrimal gland is just like uh, the size and shape of an almond this lacrimal gland is connected with the eye or with the cornea with the help of ducts and these ducts are called lacrimal ducts i'm going to write it the lacrimal gland and the lacrimal ducts lacrimal ducts may be up to 30 in number that is that connect the uh, lacrimal gland with the eye and that is responsible for the passage of lacrimal fluid from the lacrimal gland to the eye so the lacrimal fluid is produced inside this lacrimal gland and that is transferred to the eye with the help of lacrimal duct uh, now this lacrimal fluid or tear uh, comes into the eye and this washes uh, the dust particle and washes the microbes etc in the eye and this uh, tear come to this midpoint when this tear come to this area uh, this tear or this lacrimal fluid is absorbed into this canal it's also absorbed into this canal the upper canal is uh, over here this is called superior canaliculi and this is called inferior canaliculi in between the superior and inferior canaliculi there is a caruncle this is this is lacrimal caruncle lacrimal caruncle this lacrimal caruncle is having um, a tube a duct above this lacrimal uh, caruncle that is called superior canaliculi and uh, this duct is called inferior canaliculi now coming towards the next one so the tear come from this gland to the eye from the eye it uh, goes towards these canaliculi and from these canaliculi this tear or this lacrimal fluid is transferred to this sac and this sac is called lacrimal sac 
lacrimal sac is actually present adjacent with the upper part of the nose uh, near the eye and near the median commissure uh, this lacrimal sac is present and this lacrimal sac is connected again this is connected with the nose with the uh, nasal cavity of the nose the nasal cavity of the nose is having three turbinates the superior turbinate the median turbinate and inferior turbinate so this lacrimal sac is connected with the inferior turbinate i have written this this is the inferior turbinate of the nose and this inferior turbinate of the nose is connected with this lacrimal sac with the help of a duct this duct is called nasolacrimal duct this is called nasolacrimal duct now what happens uh, once again the lacrimal fluid is produced or synthesized inside this lacrimal gland and this lacrimal fluid is transferred to the eye with the help of lacrimal ducts and this uh, lacrimal fluid washes the dust particles and the microbes because this contains the lysozymes and many other neutralizing agents this washes the eye and comes toward the midpoint of the eye when it, uh, this tear come towards eye toward this canary cavity this is transferred toward the uh, lacrimal sac through the upper to the superior canary cavity and inferior canary cavity this lacrimal sac is there for the uh, for for the storage of lacrimal fluid when this uh, get filled this is transferred to the lacrimal nasolacrimal duct so this fluid or this uh, tear goes through the nasolacrimal duct uh, to the wall of the inferior turbinate of the nasal cavity so what is the function of this uh, tear inside the inferior turbinate it uh, keep the environment of the inferior turbinate with it uh, keep the inferior turbinate uh, environment moist it uh, uh, keep the wall of the inferior turbinate with to trap the dust particle or the microorganism which goes through this inferior turbinate into the lungs so this is there to filter the air to not allow the dust particle or microorganism to go into the uh, lungs through the nasal cavity so the nasal cavity is always wet the inferior turbinate of the nasal cavity is always wet due to the presence of it due to the presence of the tear or presence of the nasal uh, presence of the lacrimal fluid uh, on the wall of the inferior turbinate now uh, some sometime it happens that uh, uh, this this nasal lacrimal duct get blocked when this nasal lacrimal duct get blocked what happens the lacrimal fluid uh, get entered in, into this lacrimal sac but this is uh, unable to transfer the lacrimal fluid into the inferior turbinate so there is uh, inflammation of inflammation of nasal lacrimal uh, sac happen and this uh, inflammation uh, can be seen uh, you have seen you have seen in very patient that this uh, uh, point of the eye this point adjacent to the eye uh, becomes swelled so uh, uh, this condition when the uh, when the nasal lacrimal duct get blocked and this the swelling of this nasal lacrimal uh, or this uh, uh, lacrimal sac happens uh, the tear are unable to enter this lacrimal duct anymore so what happened the tear get uh, out of or drip out of the eye uh, through the eyelashes through the lower eyelid so this the tear is no more unable to, the tear is no more able to cross the uh, this can actually toward this uh, lacrimal sac and uh, this is also unable to go to the inferior turbinate so this condition when the blockade of the nasolacrimal duct happen this condition is called dacryocystitis dacryocystitis you have seen a lot of uh, i'm i'm going to show you in this diagram and this represent the lacrimal gland this is uh, at the at the inferior or uh, this is at the dorsal portion of the upper eyelid you have seen and this uh, 
lacrimal gland is connected with this point this is connected with cornea with the help of what with the help of uh, lacrimal ducts uh, now sometime you have, you have seen or uh, you will have seen uh, this is this kid is uh, the, he, this kid is laying on lateral position you can also call it, call it uh, recumbent position when sometime uh, you get to lie in the bed or uh, when you lie in the bed on lateral position what happened and you keep your eyes open what happened to your eyes the cycle of the lacrimal pathway the cycle of the lacrimal gland or the lacrimal fluid uh, which which is secreted from the lacrimal gland over here lacrimal gland is over here and from this lacrimal gland the lacrimal fluid is secreted into the eye and this is absorbed towards the nose into the lacrimal sac so the lacrimal secretion or lacrimal pathway of this right eye is normal because the lacrimal secretion goes to the eye and from the eye it goes to the nose but the lacrimal secretion over here is uh, obstructed how the lacrimal secretion is obstructed um, you should focus on this point that when the lacrimal gland secrete the lacrimal fluid to the eye what happen this cannot go upward against the gravity that can this cannot go into the canal equally to, uh, to go to the lacrimal sac so what happened to the lacrimal fluid this lacrimal fluid drip out of the uh, eye through the lateral commissure this this dripping out of the uh, of the tear or this dripping out of the lacrimal fluid is due to the uh, blockade of this pathway due to what due to the uh, or the uh, halting of this pathway due to what due to the uh, gravitational force due to the position of the eye uh, when your eyes are closed then uh, this dripping do not happen because the eyelid do not allow the uh, tear to get out of the eye so the uh, normal cycle of the uh, normal cycle and normal pathway of the lacrimal fluid uh, is carried on the sole function or the function of the lacrimal fluid is to wash out the microorganism from the uh, from the eye and, and also to filter the air and the inferior turbinate of the of the nose some of the fluid is also absorbed over here with the help of capillaries over here uh, and these capillaries uh, uh, once again uh, recycle this fluid towards this gland but uh, this rarely happened the 90 percent of the fluid is evaporated from the inferior turbinate and the 90 percent of the fluid is also evaporated from this eye uh, but uh, this is produced in very minute quantity inside the uh, this uh, um, lacrimal gland and put, uh, uh, less than 2 ml of uh, fluid is produced daily but uh, sometimes uh, when uh, this eye come in contact with a uh, uh, with a nasty substance when this eye come in contact with an irritant what happened the parasympathetic nervous system is activated and it uh, activate this uh, lacrimal gland to secrete large quantity of tears so the function of the um, this uh, pathway the function of this uh, lacrimal fluid is to wash out the microorganism with the help of lysozymes which are present inside this gland and the dust particle and also to accumulate the dust particle towards the caruncle towards the lacrimal caruncle and then we remove this uh, uh, the dust particle from here when that's uh,